Something that I absolutely love are little computers. Little things that I can use in a home lab environment. You can stick it on the back of a TV. Maybe you can use it in a workplace. Maybe you're rolling out a whole bunch of computers in a company and you just need something really, really small. Well, I've got six little computers. They're all mini PCs. They've all got a motherboard. They've all got a CPU. They've got some RAM. They've got a graphics card. And you can install a whole bunch of operating systems on these. Now, before we do show you these little six computers, do you have a Mac? If you've got a Mac, you need to try out this app called Clean My Mac. It is an app that I absolutely love and it's perfect to make sure that your Mac is always running healthy. Your cache and your cache, it's cleaned up. That any old dodgy files have been removed. There's a lot of optimization stuff in the background. In the show notes below, you can go and download Clean My Mac. It is the best tool that is out there for making sure that your Mac is always running well. So go check it out. And here is today's tech fail. Who remembers Clippy? Clippy was this thing that Microsoft introduced as part of the Microsoft Office suite of apps. You would open up Word, you would open up Excel, and you had this little paper clip that would help you, supposed to help you. It was this little animated character and it was meant to assist people, assist users. And I don't know about you, but this thing really annoyed me. I remember when it came out, it just would come out of nowhere and try to help you on something that you didn't need help on. That was Clippy and that was a tech fail. Why would I want to get, why would you want to get a mini PC? I mean, the first reason is that they are space saving. They're little. They take up less space than a traditional computer, a traditional desktop. This makes them a great choice for those who have limited desk space or who need a computer that can easily be moved from one location to another. They're also cost effective because they're tiny. They don't cost as much as your big desktops that are out there. In my home lab, I've got big computers. I've got small computers and I'm going to stick some of these mini PCs in there. I love to play around and tinker with new stuff. And I also like things to be neat and clean and space saving. So these are the perfect addition for any home lab. So here is our lineup. Here is our six computers, all different shapes, all different sizes, and they all have their internal bits that make some more powerful than others. Okay, so the first two are the two bigger ones of the lot. We've got the HP Elite Desk. It's got a nice hard cover on the outside. Open them up, you can stick a whole bunch of additional bits into it. You can upgrade them quite easily. These have been widely used in home labs because they're powerful. They've got good performance and they've got great expandable options using the Intel Core processors and can support a stack of RAM. Whole bunch of USB 3 ports. You've got a USB-C on the front as well. You've got your headphone jack, your microphone jacks on the front. On the back, you've got a couple of display ports, you've got your VGA, you've got your Ethernet, of course, depending on the model that you're going to get, some of those ports may be slightly different. I've wiped away Windows and installed VMware's ESXi and I've built a whole bunch of VMs onto it. Domain controller VM, running Active Directory, running Windows Server, actually control all of the security in my environment. We then move over to the Mac Mini. Size of my hand, we know the Mac Mini. They run Mac OS. In this case, you can actually wipe Mac OS if you want to add it to a home lab, to another environment. You can stick Linux. I've had this one for quite some time. It is beautiful. It's compact. It's typical Apple, which means that they just look really, really nice. You've got that nice sort of finish every single Apple device has, and they just make them look really, really slick. You've got your Ethernet, HDMI. You've got a mini display port. This one's got four USBs. It's got an SD card reader and then my microphone and speaker jacks as well but of course the Mac mini comes in a range of different configurations and different setups now a lot of these are going to be used for a home environment but you can also just stay with the Mac OS operating system on it as well if you're already invested in the Apple ecosystem which also makes it very very good to easily integrate with all of your other Apple stuff of course the later Mac minis are powered of course with the new M1 and M2 chips they offer impressive performance for their size now however it is worth noting that uh, the Mac mini is going to be on a little bit more of the expensive side than some of the other mini PCs that may be out on the market the Mac mini does not have Mac OS. That Mac OS has been removed and I've installed VMware's ESXi onto it and go and build VMs of all shapes and sizes and purposes. We then move on to this one right here. This is a B-Link Mini S. Little, little computer. I mean, just look at this. It is light. Now it is a plastic outer shell. If you're wanting something that is portable, something easily to move around, amazing. So this is running what's called an Intel 
Alder Lake processor, to the N95 processor, up to 3.4 gigahertz max, and it offers up to 16 gig of DDR4 RAM, gigabit ethernet, your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, USB 3 ports, and I love that you've got two HDMI's directly on the back. You've got your four screw holes on the back, you can open this thing up, add the hard drive, you can add additional RAM. The B-Link is running Windows 11. You can also go and install Linux onto that, install Plex directly onto that computer, and then actually stream all of my video and movie content directly onto a TV, onto my iPhone. This little thing was brilliant for that purpose. So that's the B-Link. I love the Intel NUC. I've done lots of videos on the Intel NUC previously. It was actually the very, very first mini PC that I ever got. Now it is significantly heavier than that B-Link that we looked at just before, and it packs a punch. They do come in different sorts of flavors, different processor types. You can buy them empty and then put all the stuff inside of them, or you can buy them already as a bundle, customize it to your liking. This particular one that I've got is an i7. There's a whole bunch of ports. You've got in total four USBs. You've got a HDMI. You've got a display port, gigabit ethernet. I open this puppy up. I can put myself my SSD hard drive. I can add additional RAM to it. The Intel NUC, because there's a little bit more grunt, it's also running VMware's ESXi is running some websites. It's actually running WordPress. It's also got a secondary domain controller. It's got a DNS and it's also running a DHCP server all from that one box. Love the Intel NUX. Now the next two are like a bit of a different sort of setup. They're not really inside of a case. This next one is what's called a Zimmer board. It looks literally like a big heat sink with a whole bunch of ports on it. This is great. I mean, this is an awesome small little computer option. Now it has been advertised as a single board server, exclusively designed for makers and geeks. I'm a geek and I think this thing is amazing. It has both the expandability of a standard single board computer and the power of a micro server. This particular one is the Zimmer board 832 runs an Intel quad core CPU up to 2.2 gigahertz processor, dual ethernet. Now that is something that is awesome. That shows you that it's a little bit more server grade, has Wi-Fi, has Bluetooth. Now it comes this one with eight gig LPDDR4 RAM, 32 gig MMC built-in storage. You can actually add two external SATA drives to this. Comes with the cables and I plug in two SATA drives. How cool is this? Comes with a PCI port so you can add a additional cards. And like a lot of the earlier computers that we've looked at, the Zimmer board of course does support a whole bunch of operating systems. You can run Windows onto it, but you can also run a whole bunch of your Linux stuff. And if you want to get fancy, even some of your server operating systems. Number six is, of course, the Raspberry Pi. I mean, anyone who's anyone who's a tech geek needs to have a Raspberry Pi. I mean, look at this. It is tiny. Absolutely love the Raspberry Pi. This one here is the Raspberry Pi 4. This is the Model B, 64-bit quad-core A72 processor. It has your two micro HDMI ports, supports up to 4K, two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, has gigabit ethernet, built-in wireless, built-in Bluetooth, and then your USB-C port, which can be used for powering the whole thing. And of course, on the bottom, you slot in your micro SD card right into the bottom right there. So you can actually install your operating systems and go to town. You can build your own media server, you can build your own web server, and you can run a whole bunch of Linux operating systems directly onto it. Now, no wonder this is the tool of choice for a lot of people who are doing pen testing. If you don't know what pen testing is, penetration testing, people who may want to go into a company to go and test the security of a business, security of a network. You can have one of these little things, you've got an ethernet point, Linux operating system, Kali Linux, slotted into a spot, and it's because it's so tiny and so little, it's very, very easy to miss. The Zimmer board and the Raspberry Pi are both running Linux. Different flavors of Linux for different purposes. One of them being Kali Linux. If you're wanting to know more about security, penetration testing, ethical hacking. And I've also got another server that is running PFSense, which is a security firewall proxy server to actually control all of the security in my environment. Ultimately, the best mini computer for you depends of course on your specific needs, right? Depends on a few things. Price, of course, probably being the biggest one. The more you pay, 
the more you get. Smallest one here being the Raspberry Pi, the largest one being the Mac Mini. Some you can add a lot more RAM, which is really, really appealing, and you can add additional hard drives, which is also great. Ultimately, all of them, you can run a flavor of Linux. Some of them you can run Windows, and some of them you can run some virtualization technology such as Citrix or VMware, if you do want to go and build it into a virtual lab. First thing you got to really think about is what you actually want to be building onto them. If you do want to run some more powerful operating systems, some more powerful software, then you're gonna need a computer that is slightly more powerful. I've got links down below for all of these. You can go and check them out and pick the one that is right for you. And hey, we release videos every week on all things tech. The next video is coming up right now. We'll see you then.